The tale of Frodo and his fellowship of the ring is well known, but the assault on Middle-earth reaches far and wide. It's now up to three unknown adventurers to defeat the forces of Sauron in Lord of the Rings War in the North. Welcome to Leisure Gamer. We review games after an hour of playing to see if they're worth fitting into your busy working professional life. Pay heed now to one such tale, which begins here in the town of Bree, just a few short days before Frodo arrived on his quest. The game's three companions meet with Aragorn as he awaits for Frodo's arrival in the town of Bree. They discuss their growing threat to the north. Agandaur, one of Sauron's commanders, has amassed an orcish army to aid the Black Riders in the search for Frodo's ring. The three heroes must put a stop to the northern commander before its armies can attack the Fellowship of the Ring. There is a hobbit of the Shire who should be coming this way with a great burden. If it falls into the hands of the enemy, it will mean doom for us all. War in the North is an action-adventure game with some RPG elements. The overall structure of the game is linear rather than free roam. The characters can only be customized slightly, the quest system is very narrow, the focus of the game is on the hack and slash combat and telling an original story set within the Lord of the Rings universe. Each of the three characters have preset masteries which determines their playstyle. While all three have ranged and melee weapons, the dwarven champion excels at close quarters. The human ranger uses his bow at a distance and can sneak up on enemies. The elven lore master can focus on healing or use offensive spells as well as attack with her staff. War in the North features two-player couch co-op, or allows for three players to party together online. All the characters have light and heavy attacks, ranged attacks, and specials which are unlocked by earning experience from killing enemies. These skills fall under one of three skill trees which tweak the overall playstyle of the character. For example, you might have the Human Ranger focus on archery rather than stealth. After weakening an enemy with multiple strikes, a critical can be achieved by performing a heavy attack to finish them off. The combat is visceral, which makes War in the North the first title in the Lord of the Rings franchise to achieve a mature rating. Loot is also a big part of the game. Gear can be bought and sold, given to computer-controlled companions, or traded online with friends. Swapping between the three characters is possible at certain checkpoints. When changing characters, your current level remains, but all the skills are left unassigned since the last time you controlled them. The other two heroes then rotate and become computer controlled and auto level alongside you until you choose to actively play the other character again. Stay close to us! They have a mounted crossbow! Take cover! By default, the game is set at normal, and the harder difficulty levels have to be unlocked by beating the game. However, depending on the character, it was a real struggle to die within the first hour. Before dying completely, characters can be revived by their teammates before they bleed out. Even when playing alone, the computer does a good job of making sure you're back up on your feet in no time. However, the checkpoints are distant, so if all your teammates die, you'll have to replay, re-kill, and re-loot your way through the area again. There are also balance issues with the characters. The Lore Master is definitely the most challenging to play solo because of her reliance on mana and lack of physical strength. When playing alone, it's best to have the computer controller, but when playing with other players that can tank the damage for you, it was rewarding to play her as a support class. These balance issues, combined with the distant checkpoints, earns War in the North a rating of standard for difficulty. The checkpoints are also a concern for finding a good place to stop for the night. If you don't make it to the end of a stage, you'll have to replay that area again when you return. There are certain points in a level where you can travel back to town, but there isn't much to do there. The towns are a little boring with bland layouts and only a few dialogue quests to undertake. The towns just didn't feel like anyone actually lived there. I thank you. Farewell, Smith. War in the North earns the rating of evening for time commitment. The level design is somewhat boxy, and the loot always seems to be stashed in the corners of each area. Many times after all the enemies had been defeated, it would take a few minutes to search for all the loot. While this did let you catch your breath, the downtime ruined the pace of the action. I sense a hidden opening in the stone. War in the North can best be described as a solid game. 
The graphics are good, but not great. The interface is easy to navigate, but it's simplistic. The story isn't very bold, but it will be fun for fans of Lord of the Rings to make friends with the Great Eagle or chat with a hobbit at the Prancing Pony. The time spent with War in the North was enjoyable, and the game earns the rating of yes, but... I would recommend the title if you're looking for a solid hack and slash title and a fan of Lord of the Rings. But just know that War in the North doesn't have all the bells and whistles of a larger budget title. Don't forget to subscribe and share your own thoughts on the game. Till next time, enjoy gaming.